Welcome to this video on standing waves. We're going to start by covering a few key points from last year. The first point you need to remember is that if you have a light rope, you can create a wave that flicks down towards the other end. Now, if it's connected to a more dense medium like a heavier rope or it's just attached to a tree or a wall, that wave is going to hit the end and bounce back as an inverted wave. And the wave coming in to start with interferes constructively or destructively with the reflected poles coming back and they can create what we call a standing wave. So you might have seen waves like this established in a string. Or you can imagine if you tie a rope up to a tree and wave it up and down and up and down, you could establish some kind of wave that looks like this. What's actually happening is the waves you're creating are traveling along the rope, hitting the tree, going inverted and reflecting back, and then they're interfering with the next wave which is coming along. If you get this at just the right frequency, you can set up a standing wave that looks something like this all of the time. So instead of looking like the waves are traveling along, it just looks like they're oscillating up and down as a still rope. These are called standing waves. So there's three things you need to know from standing waves that we're gonna learn in this video, plus one more we'll learn in the next video. The first thing you need to know is about nodes and anti-nodes. Nodes are the areas of these standing waves that have no movement at all. Whereas anti-nodes are these areas which have maximum movement in our standing waves. The way I tend to remember this is that nodes have node movement. The second thing we need to note is about resonance. So if you remember this formula V equals F lambda from last year, it'll come up quite a lot again this year. So say in this specific case of shaking a rope against a tree, the velocity of the wave in the rope is going to be set. Also, the wavelength or quarter wavelength is going to be set for us. And this is an important point to take home for merit and excellence level answers. You'll notice here that the wave is going to be fixed or held together at your hands because you're holding it. It can't be waving up and down at a maximum level while you're holding it. In the same way where it's connected to the tree, it's going to be held still. So both of these are going to be nodes. Now, if you're going to have it connected at nodes, there's got to be a certain number of wavelengths or half wavelengths that exist. So here we have three wavelengths, or you'll see between nodes we've got six half wavelengths, which is each of these bulges. When we're counting the number of wavelengths in a standing waves, they must come in halves. We can't have a quarter wavelength because it wouldn't be tied to the tree. A quarter would be at an anti-node, same at three quarters, and so that's not tied down. So it needs to be at zero, a half, one, one and a half wavelengths, and so on. These are the wavelengths that choose to exist. Now. If you shake it at just the right frequency, called the resonant frequency, then you'll get a standing wave set up. There can be slower resonant frequencies, which means you only have one big bulge or one half wavelength, or you can shake it much faster and get it like here that there's six bulbs or six half wavelengths set up. All of these are resonant frequencies. And other things to note on this topic is that you can actually alter your velocity if you choose to change the medium so instead you've got a heavier rope which would slow the wave speed down or you've got a lighter rope which would speed it up. Or alternatively, if you change the tension. So this is like if you had a guitar string attached along. If you tighten a guitar string or a piano string, it's gonna go up in frequency. That's because it changes the speed of the wave. So the frequency here relates to the speed, remember because the wavelength is set. So this frequency is called pitch. If it's a musical note, a higher pitch means a higher frequency, and a lower pitch means a lower frequency. In the opposite way, if you increase the velocity of these waves by increasing the tension or having a lighter rope, for example, then you're going to increase the frequency and you'll hear a higher pitch sound. So this is called resonance. Finally, we're going to look at three types of standing waves. The first is a string. It's the same as a rope. It's what we've been looking at. Now, a string is attached at both ends, so it has a node at both ends. Here's an example here where it's fully attached at one end, it's going to be fully attached at the other end, and there's nodes in both these places. Now you could have just a half wavelength, which is our most simple or basic wave, that'll be our lowest frequency. Or you can have multiple half wavelengths, like three half wavelengths or five half wavelengths. All you need to remember for a string is that it's fixed at both ends and therefore there's a node at both ends. So your take home message is that there's nodes at each end and because there's nodes at each end, there must be a half number of wavelengths set up. The second type we can have is a closed pipe. So for example, a clarinet. It's closed off at one end, or almost all closed off at one end and very open at the other end. Now an open end of a pipe means that the sound wave set up is a standing wave, 
which will have an anti node at the open end. An opening always means an anti node. Whereas a closed ending, like this one, always means a node. So in this case, we've actually set up a quarter wavelength here rather than just a half. Now you'll notice that then it jumps straight to three quarters of a wavelength down here because we can't have it as half a wavelength because there can't be a node at the opening. So with a closed pipe, it's always a node on the left hand side, an anti node at the opening, and you can have any number of ups and downs in between. So remember, because there's a node at one end, it starts at quarter wavelengths, and then we go up by a half wavelength each time from there. So we go up from a quarter to three quarters, then to one and a quarter, then to one and three quarters, and so on. Finally, we're going to look at an open pipe. With a string, we had two nodes. With a closed pipe, we had one node, one anti node. Now an open pipe has two anti nodes. So because an anti node is created whenever there's an opening, we're going to have anti nodes at both ends. So again, you'll notice there's a half number of wavelengths set up at the most basic one, and it goes up in halves from there. We could have one full wavelength, which is what we've got down here, or we could have one and a half, which we've got down the bottom here. Again, same as a string, it's made up of half wavelengths, and the most basic one is a half wavelength here. But different to a string, there's anti nodes at each end. So here's what you need to know from this video. You need to remember that a wave you're creating is going along the medium and reflecting back, same with a pipe as well as a string. The incident and the reflected pulses will interfere with each other to create these anti-nodes, the areas of maximum amplitude, and the nodes, the area of node movement. Next, we learned about resonance in this formula, V equals F lambda. Remember, we can change the velocity by changing the medium, so we have a heavier or a lighter rope, or if we're just talking about strings, we can change the tension of the string. Next thing we learned was that the velocity relates to the pitch. Because those wavelengths are set, if you increase the speed of the wave, then you're going to increase the frequency of the pitch. And vice versa, if you lower the velocity, you lower the frequency and lower the pitch. Finally, we learned the three different types of standing waves. We have an open pipe with an anti-node at both ends. We have a closed pipe with a node at one end and an anti-node at the other end. And a string which has a node at both ends. These are the three different types of standing waves we'll be looking at in more detail in the next video. But first, let's look at a question. So this is from the 2005 exam and talks about this child's toy, which consists of a long, flexible plastic pipe, which is open at both ends. So holding the pipe at one end, the other end can be swung around and around so that a standing wave is set up in this pipe and a musical note is heard. So we need to explain how a standing wave is set up in this open pipe. The first thing you need to write down is that waves travel along the pipe and they're reflected back from the open end, exactly the same as it is in a string, and that creates a standing wave. It's the first thing you've got to mention. The second thing you have to mention is because it's an open pipe, there are anti-nodes at each end. So, so far you're at an achieved level answer. This actually goes up to an excellence answer if you talk about wavelengths. So you can say that only a certain number of wavelengths can fit into the pipe. So the flow of air through the pipe causes those waves to be generated, like we've just talked about, but only half wavelengths that actually fit within the pipe and resonate create a standing wave. So if you mention that only a certain number of wavelengths can fit into the pipe and resonate to create these standing waves, then you jump up to an excellence level answer. So these are standing waves.